feel like Gordon Bombay would have taken his career to even further height. Everything's flashy, everything's cocaine, everything's fun. Open wide for some soccer. I don't care what you think about, what your personal thoughts are at home. I care that you hate the Cowboys. Call this college rule! Welcome, everybody. Sports Experience Podcast. Uh, just a quick reminder, we got some social medias out there. Uh, they're probably popping up here and there. Please give us a follow. Um, we do this down here at uh, Angle Studio. If you're ever in Tucson and you need anything recorded, um, he is a very great spot. And we're at the tail end of this block leading up to the big pooper. The, the big, big pooper. Ga- the big game. The big <laughs> kahuna. The things we're allowed to say. You guys know what I'm talking about. Who are we talking today? Today we it's are. It's not even who. Yeah, it's not even who. It's our block episodes. It's the end of our block episodes on the craziest, uh, most insane NFL playoff games that have ever existed. Well, are we allowed to say NFL? Yeah, I think we ah. are. Yeah, National Football <laughs> something. So. And we are talking about one of the most bizarre big games ever played. It, it's only known by two numbers. Oh man, give it to me. 28 to 3, Chris. We're talking blank, blank, 51 Falcons versus Patriots. The 51st, you know what we're talking about. And one of the, and I agree with you because the Pats, it is such a weird game when you get into it. And it might be the luckiest, might be the luckiest. Um, there's just plays that you're just like, I can't even believe that happened. Yeah, like, why did this happen? Why yeah. have you forsaken us? You know, things of that nature. Uh, so let's talk about the teams headed into this game, the 2016 Falcons. Uh, they had not made the playoffs since 2012, where at the end of that season blew a very large lead in the NFC Championship to yep. the San Francisco 49ers. Um, they're rebuilding under head coach Dan Quinn, who was hired for the 2015 season. And they've been improving by a couple of wins each year. And there's one thing this offense could do. Unlike Beavis and Butthead, they knew how to score. It's, they knew how to put points on the board and they score. Were, and that's what they were all season was an explosive offense. And you, you see that in this game where... It's it surprises me that they ended up they end up slowing down. Yeah, well, uh, offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan, who is currently coaching in these here playoffs now for the 49ers. Yep. Uh, assistants Matt Lafleur, who is now head coach in Green Bay. Uh, his brother Mike Lafleur, who was just axed as offensive coordinator in uh, with the Jets. And then Mike McDaniel was an offensive assistant, and he just took the Dolphins to the playoffs. Um, I wanted to say 11 of their 16 regular season games, they scored 30 or more points. And quarterback Matt Ryan, good old Matty Ice, wins the NFL MVP that year um, with almost 5,000 passing yards and 38 touchdowns. I was going to say, his numbers were insane. And the as a team, their offensive numbers were insane. And they said they just had so many weapons on offense. And Matt Ryan literally could just pick whoever he wanted you know what i mean there wasn't like the the one who's just like well you're open but i can't give you this kind of yeah thing. exactly there's the number of weapons two-headed monster in the backfield with devonta freeman who made the pro bowl 11 rushing touchdowns tevin coleman had eight rushing touchdowns and they had a combined 85 catches for over almost 890 yards out of the backfield, out of the backfield. we're not even talking yeah. about first team all pro wide receiver julio jones muhammad sanu who was a good number two in this league for a while i mean Taylor Gabriel, they picked off the up off the scrap heap and uh, with the Browns. I mean, this was just a juggernaut on offense, and it really carried them through the NFC that season. Because the let's get into their defense now. Yeah, because they have <laughs> <Their> a, defense <laughs> a very young and I feel like inexpensive defense where you kind of see where their money gets pumped into. Yeah. Um, they have a nice rotation along the defensive line. There's about seven or eight guys. Um, Grid Jarrett, who's a great young player, he's still actually on this team. A lot of these people are not on the Falcons anymore. Yeah. Um, Vic Beasley is first team All Pro with 15 and a half sacks. Um, our old buddy Dwight Franey is going for one last shot or one last ring, yep. I guess. Um, and then uh, at linebacker Dion Jones, who's in his second season is an absolute beast. He's all over the field as far as leading the team um, in tackles with 108. And a good young secondary um, for Atlanta with Robert Alford um, as well as rookie Keon O'Neal, Jalen Collins, and Ricardo Allen. They're 27th, though, in scoring, but they're kind of gelling as the season goes along. I because think. they are young. First, yeah. first second seasons, um, and you kind of see that because – 
I bet it's surprising getting to the big game. The big game. This early in your career uh, with with uh, this team, but they were. I bet they were riding on such a high that getting there was kind of not like uh, a foregone conclusion, but not as surprising. Yeah, because they they started the year six and three, and then when they dipped to seven and five, they lost a bizarre game. I remember to Kansas City where they had a two pointer returned against them. Uh, oh for, yeah. yeah, like a conversion going back for two points, but then they won their final four to get uh, finish eleven and five and get the number two seed yep. in the NFC behind Dallas, and then they annihilate Russell Wilson and the Seahawks thirty six to twenty in the divisional round. They scored nineteen unanswered after being down ten to seven. Ryan had three TD passes in the game. Coleman and Freeman had two hundred three combined yards and a TD apiece, and. Uh, Three sacks on Russell Wilson by the defense. Um, but since Dallas lost in the divisional round, they get to play the NFC title game at home against Green Bay, and they just napalm the shit out of them. Yeah, their offense was just like, and this is kind of like going into this game is you're looking at this offense kind of, like we were saying, kind of like gelling with this defense, and they're becoming this complete team that really steamrolls people. The D's not necessarily dominant, but they shut the Packers out in the but, first half. Yes. And they're getting turnovers, and they're building leads. So and they have, they're getting big plays, and they're, yeah. Julio went nuts in this game for 180 yards and two TDs. <laughs> Ryan had four touchdowns. And one thing about the Falcons in these two postseason games, did not commit a single turnover on offense. So they that's end pretty up, big. That's pretty big. They went forty-four to twenty-one. The game was all. The final score was a lot closer than how badly they beat Green Bay. And, yeah, because uh, they were up, and then in the fourth they got some garbage time yeah. points. You know. Oh yeah. And now we get into their opponent, the twenty sixteen Patriots. The always faithful. Oh. The always trustworthy. The, the always deflate gate because Tom Brady misses the first four games for deflating. Of all the shit that they did, that's the one where I'm like, really NFL. Yeah. Like really, you sh- it was almost like a punishment for other things that they had done that they couldn't prove. If like, that, if that kind of like the, they got the slap on the wrist for Spygate, where yep. it should have been like, no, you should have been ice for the whole season. You're deflating. Come on, man. Like of all the punishments they've gotten, that's the most ridiculous. Um, but they uh, Brady misses the first four games. It doesn't matter. Jimmy GQ and Jacoby Brissett go three and one yeah. in said games. I mean. They play in the most garbage division at the time in the AFC. Their schedule is always weak. Brady comes back, and they're just like a Death Star, essentially, the entire season. Well, it, And they have a great team. Because you're always. not wrong, because these, these, a lot of the time in their division, they're almost just kind of like homecoming games for college teams. Oh, yeah. just like, we set this up against a weaker opponent so we could have a good game, you guys. Playing like, the Bills and the Jets and the Finkelis Dolphins. Uh, uh, offense was stacked as always because you have Brady as your quarterback. Uh, third in points per game uh, makes the Pro Bowl. Um, Legarrette Blunt had an awesome year. This is yeah. like one of his three seasons in a row. He makes a Super Bowl, I think, with different teams. With different teams, yeah. 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 Uh, over a thousand yards, eighteen rushing touchdowns. He man, he was in the red zone. Yeah, he was their big, uh, big punch it in. Um, the pass catchers, James White, who we'll talk about later, and Deion Lewis, you know, because they run those option routes and that short the, dink and the dunk dump, shit. Yep. And both of them had great hands. Um, Martellus Bennett comes in because Gronk is hurt for the one billionth time, and he puts on a great season, kind of like the first time he's in an offense where he can showcase his blocking and pass receiving. Yes. Um, Wide receivers, you have Julian Edelman. I don't, I don't remember if this is before or after his PED suspension, but fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> over 1,000 yards. And uh, Chris Hogan, because why not? All our wide receivers are white. We're the New England Patriots. Um, four touchdowns and 680 yards. Uh, rookie Malcolm Mitchell came on down the stretch. He had missed the first part of the year yep. with an elbow injury, but, man, he really turned it on when they needed him without Gronk for another playmaker. And Danny Amendola also has kind of a down season, but added comes, into that dink and dunk mix. Yes. And, and it really kind of goes into the strategy. Obviously, that's like the Pat philosophy back then where all of these guys have great hands and they can get open. They can get open. And teams are too stupid to not chuck them at the line of scrimmage. 
But defense, they had the number one defense in points per game, which yes. I thought was pretty interesting. I think a lot of that has to do with the play, fact six Where of your 16 play. games yeah. are against homecoming opponents. But they have one of the best defenses. They that's do. What that, oh, I feel like that's what always pr- that proves is like a top three, a top four, which is only thing you really want is a defense that can actually shut down any offense. They were limiting teams to less than 16 points a game. They yeah. were good. Like the Falcons, they had a good defensive line rotation, uh, veterans like Chris Long and Rob Ninkovich, but also guys like Alan Branch and Malcolm Brown. Um, Dante Hightower was Who's, probably their woo. best player because uh, you can play him in the middle, you can play him outside, you can blitz him off the edge, you can pass cover a little bit. That uh, might be a little foreshadowing. Made the Pro Bowl, yes, a little bit. Uh, secondary. They just, That's... I don't know how they find guys in this. They go to like Rutgers and find guys like the McCordys or Logan Ryan and and they just turn out to be solid pros. Like, he, it, you're not wrong. They <laughs> like... In this era, they really found guys that shouldn't have been. And I don't mean like these. McCordy was the first, the Devin McCordy, he's been, and he's still playing. He's awesome awesome but, but like, you yeah. know they, they find these gems that you're just like okay there <laughs> right? you go and you're just like why yeah oh uh, why oh, malcolm New butler's England. at the other corner he was the super bowl 49 hero yep um they roll into the playoffs they're the number one seed they beat bill o'brien in houston 34 16 at home in the divisional round and then of course like every afc championship game the steelers have to go up to foxborough and get Absolutely manhandled 36 to 17, and Chris Hogan still lives in my nightmares from nobody being able to cover that son of a bitch. Well, that, that's the other thing is both of these offenses leading up to this game have a lot of weapons. And they're cooking. But they are built different where Atlanta could really give you a huge play, mm-hmm. and Brady really just <laughs> dumps it. He's just like, no, no, no we're going to go for seven. We'll go for seven. We're going to paper cut <laughs> you to death. And we're going to make you watch it gonna, clockwork orange style. And then Blunt's going to blunt it in. That's just the <laughs> way it goes. Or he's going to punch a Boise State defender. Uh, but it's a good. it was a great Super Bowl matchup, honestly. These yes. two teams, like the team that always wins, the team that never <laughs> wins at all. Young quarterback, old quarterback. Mm-hmm. Young head coach, old head coach. Yes. Like, just the juxtaposition, good cat and mouse. Yep. But uh, leading into Houston, Texas, for this Super Bowl, it's going to be a good game, Chris. The first quarter, though, is kind of just like they're feeling each other out, though. Well, I feel like the defenses kind of made a like a statement in this game off the bat because neither offense could really get going. Yeah. It, like, Patriots do three and out in the first drive, and mm-hmm. you're just like, oh, all right. And then Atlanta gets stopped. And it is very much like that. Like you were saying, it's almost like a prize fight where the first round they're just like, well, I'm not going to like swing on you. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to find out what you have and what I need to be worried about and then what I can totally take advantage of. Um, At 1028. Seemed a little. uh, What? You know what I'm saying. Seemed a little what? You know what I'm saying. It was a little uh, aggressive. <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of you. But you're 100% right. Yeah. Where they're like, what formations are you going to be coming out with? Yeah, like what, what do you, you like to run in these situations? Exactly. And, and who and, do we have to stop you? And Brady is like looking at all of There's just like, oh, you're going to give me this. You're going to, And Matt Ryan too. And that's why in the second, I, I feel like going into the second when you're watching this game, because I actually had people at my house. I had this was like one of the only times I've ever had a Super Bowl party. Oh shit! This. Really? Yeah. Um, I think actually Ty, our producer, was there. But <laughs> I can't remember for sure. But I just waved at him. But that was the that was the thing. Was like going into the second quarter, you thought like, well, the offenses are definitely going to score. Because they'd been moving a little more. Atlanta was kind of getting some first downs. They were just like, were unlucky with sacks yep. um, near midfield or around midfield. And their punter, um, Bosher, was keeping them in the game with some really good punts. But you could feel that the offenses were going to get going. And mm-hmm. I remember thinking, well, the Patriots are going to put some, sh- they're going to put some points on the board and Atlanta's going to have a big play. Yeah. That was immediately what I thought and then I remember I can't remember who it was at my house but they said, "Yeah, Julio Jones hasn't gotten one pass." And I was Not like, "Yet." <laughs> Here you go, <laughs> and he introduces himself. So at the beginning of the second quarter, Edelman has a 27-yard catch down of the Atlanta 33. Oh, yeah. 
And on first down, they give the ball to Blunt, and you're thinking, uh-oh, New England, they're going to score here. Yeah. He's stripped by Deion Jones, and Robert Alford makes the recovery. Like the – what was it? I believe uh, um, Aikman said something about uh, Belichick saying that New England had the best strip team that year. That's great. At, or Atlanta had the best strip the team. Did, and yeah, I'm yeah. just like – Really? Strip team? It's like Can't wet hot another. American summer. Stick team. Taking out my stick team. So he recovers at the Falcons 29. And when Atlanta gets the ball, they start cooking. And like you said, first play out, 19-yard catch by Julio. And it's the first time that Matt Ryan actually targets him. And yeah. that's what that was the thing is like you see – because Julio is just a fucking big – he's a big catch kind of guy. He's a you first know? ballot Hall of Famer is what Julio yeah. Jones is, and he proved it in this game. I, it, he has some of the best catches in a Super Bowl. He's catching them where it's, – It's crazy. Guys are on top of him or they undercut the route and the ball just somehow finds him and he finagles his way to get it. Well, he's lucky that New England wasn't a strip team. You know? Strip team. <laughs> so – but And then they go right back. They go right back to Julio again for another big play. And then Devonta Freeman, because they'd been successfully running it in the first quarter. Yes. I kind of, I, w- I won't say I was confused, but I feel like they should have kept going with the run. I mean, granted, those pass plays, these guys are wide open. But, like, in the first quarter, you maybe could have got some points by just keeping the ball on the ground because both Freeman and Coleman are doing well. It's yes. not just one guy just over not- the other. Um Freeman gets a uh, uh, 25-yard cutback down in the New England 14 and then gets it all the way down to the 5-yard line with 2.20 left in uh, – or 12.20 left in the second quarter. And wide open, goes right to the left, scores a touchdown to open the scoring for him. So five plays, 72 yards. It was like that. Yeah. It was just like hot knife through butter, man. It, yes. And this is what you kind of thought these offenses were going to do. And then Atlanta showed – well – let me say this, because that blunt strip, and then because you think New England is going to do it, and then Atlanta just literally turns it around, and they're just like, no, 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 we're going to do it. And, and you're right with the run game, where I feel like they ditch it throughout this game, and it really hurts them. At certain points, you're just like, just run the really? ball. Really? And yeah, we'll talk about kind of when your happens near the end. But uh, New England gets the ball. Um, they only, Lewis only gets them out to the their own 15. Um, it's the first time they said they've trailed in a game since week 12. Yep. That Yeah, that's what your candy-ass schedule gets you. <laughs> but Brady goes incomplete. Um, Mitchell has a uh, drop deep. And then C.J. Goodwin, a former receiver the Steelers cut in camp, is playing cor- – sure could have used him last week playing cornerback, dick bags. <laughs> Ends up being the hero on the drive. On second down, has some great coverage. And then on third and seven, uh, stops White from getting a first down yep. about a yard or two short of the sticks. New England has to punt it back. New England has to punt it back. So they already – so Lana's up 7 nothing, and they really show that they can stop this New England offense. Yeah. That's the thing that in this – it like at this point in the game, you're just like, wow, they really have stopped them like – Four or five times now. The thing about Maybe Atlanta three. is when they have the ball, though, on offense, whether they score or not, they're not handling it for very long. No, on, they don't. They're the not. Time. They're not controlling the clock. That's not even like I feel like a thought. In it's their... not a thought now. No. But when we Monday morning quarterback this at the end, we'll <laughs> discuss it. So Atlanta gets the ball. Um, their own thirty-six. Um, Ryan finds uh, Gabriel for 24 yards because everyone on this play is covering Julio Jones. There's yeah. like three guys, maybe even four on him on that play. Then he hits Jones for another 18. <laughs> like, just completely, he's outplaying these corners, and this is no disrespect to New England's cornerbacks. They have good coverage in almost all of these instances where they're not putting three guys on Julio and someone's running free. Yeah, no, it, they have good coverage. He is literally just that much better, and Matt Ryan's literally picking him out, and we see them march back down the field. And New England's D comes up kind of big um, at their own 19 uh, yard mm-hmm. line where they're facing a th- Atlanta's facing a third and nine. And Ryan 
for whatever, I mean, he goes one on one. I think Hooper, uh, Austin Hooper, their tight ends being covered by Patrick Chung, kind of runs a little bit of an in, almost a little skinny post up the field, and Ryan kind of throws him open, and they score another touchdown to go up fourteen to nothing with basically halfway through the second quarter, yep. forty eight to go. At that point, you're thinking the route might be on. The route might be on. Like I'm with the way that they march down, like you said, very quick. 20 yard plays and they kind of dump it in. They're not killing a lot of clock. You're like, they could put up a lot of points. It was less than this drive, I think, was less than two minutes. Which is crazy. Which is great. I mean, you're and you're making touchdowns, which is great. But uh New England gets the ball back, and this is kind of the first time they really have an extended drive where you're like, okay, they're, they're threatening. They're- and you're thinking also, hmm, the refs might want to keep them in the game on this particular drive. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying there's is of that. there's three different penalties on Atlanta on third downs, which keep this drive for New England moving. And not to say that they're not moving the ball. There are some great plays on this drive by James White, who is catching anything and everything. Brady's checking it down to him at this point all game long. But they definitely got some lucky calls. Well, yeah. I'll just say that. This was one of those drives where you're just like uh, – if you're not a Patriots fan, you're just like, oh. Oh, I see what's going on here. I've Great. seen this song and dance before. Yeah. Um, so Brian Poole has two holding penalties for Atlanta uh, on this particular drive. Um, Brady hits Bennett uh, for a 13-yard gainer down to the Atlanta uh, 27. So it's third and six. And New England's already in field goal range for Steven Guskowski, who's, granted, had... Throughout late in his career, he was terrible on extra points, if you can believe it. But he was a good kicker for but he, a while. Yeah, I was going to say he was a good kicker and a solid kicker. But coming in, no. this is not a good one. <laughs> on third and six, though, uh, they're going for Edelman. And off of kind of one of those rub routes where, you know, you create confusion in the defensive backfield, Robert Alford doesn't bite on this play. Robert Alford plays, knows exactly which of his men to play, breaks on the ball, intercepts. Tom Brady just outside oh, yeah. the red zone and oh and my god when you, when I saw Tom Brady diving and missing let's just say I arrived for you know censorship purposes Tom if you're going to peek do it awesome. in your room do it in- <laughs> Well, it's a first. It's a pick six. It's, it's the first yards. It's the first pick six that Timmy B ever throws um, in, a, in his seventh Super Bowl, which is kind of ridiculous. But when you see it happen, that like he has no chance of catching him. It's one of no. those things that if you hate Tom Brady or if you oh, dislike it him, it is a great camera angle to see him dive and just be like, no. There go my hopes and dreams. Hopefully my horse face now ex-wife has something cooking for me later. Because now it's 21 nothing. Now it's 21 nothing, and the offense has to come back out. But Atlanta's defense after this drive has to go back out on the field. That too. So New England gets the ball um, on the following drive because they're still just under two and a half to go. And to their credit, the champions that they are, they don't have any quit in them. They keep moving the football. There was a great catch and run by White on this drive for 28 yards where he kind of deked Jones near the sideline and cut it back up the field. Um, Hogan had an eight-yard catch on third and two. And then uh, another pass for White gets them six yards eventually down to the uh, Atlanta 15. Unfortunately, there's a huge penalty on Martellus Bennett for holding. And New England kind of cocks up the end of this drive with their clock management. And granted, they end the ha- with two seconds left, they end up kicking a field goal to go down 21-3. to But you were thinking if there was any drive for them to like put the fear of God into Atlanta, they would have had to put up seven. Yeah. Because, so- yeah. Going into halftime, it's 21-3. You're right. They're, it's almost like they were fine with the three points, which isn't bad. Not bad at all. But going into this halftime. They had a plan. They were ready to lure children into that locker room like the Sanderson sisters. Kathy and Jimmy was there. Somebody smelled a child. Tom Brady needed that essence back. And Belichick did it. Grumbledore that- said, hey, let's do it. 
I told you I watched this thing mic'd up, and I, I thought it was interesting. One of the assistant coaches, not the one with the giant beard. Patricia. Whew. Uh, <laughs> um, but one of the other ones was just like, I still think we could win this game. And I was like, that's bold. And it was more like, it was more like we can't go out and win it in one play, which is yeah. such a cliche thing. But he just came out and said that right away, and I was just like, I like that. I like that going into the going into the well, locker room. When you think room. about it, there's 30 minutes to go. That's an eternity in the NFL. And they don't kill the clock. So uh, Atlanta doesn't kill the clock. And their D, and their D as it's, you'll see by the end of the third quarter, is straight gas. Yes. The coach actually makes that comment uh, in the end of the third quarter where he just goes, we're gas. We need to get off the field. Like literally – and he kind of screws them over. But, you know, let's just get let's into just it. Let's just get into the Half-time third Halftime show. Half-time. Lady Gaga. Yeah, well, one of the weirdest ones. That's why I'm bringing it up. I definitely missed it. I had to finish off a situation in the bathroom knowing the New England Patriots were melting down on live national television. Um, I would never watch Lady Gaga. But... I watched it. I danced. Did I... you really? <laughs> Did you have a meat suit on? I actually like watching them because I like to see how ridiculous they are. Okay. Except for last year, I thought was pretty awesome with Eminem and that whole. It was like a throwback. You're just like, I remember that. From oh, it's like <laughs> it 20s. was the most. I remember saying it was the most member berries fucking yeah, halftime yes, show yes. for people our age. Yes. Like, uh, but I always thought they are so ridiculous and out of place for what football is. Yeah. Oh, That's God. why I actually love them because there's like fanatical football fans that have to. They're like yep. literally, it's like torture for them. It's like you have to endure this. Yep. To watch the second half. And it's like all the people who come to the party, they have to endure watching the game. Oh, I love it. Oh, God. It's like the tit for tat right there. It is. It is the. <laughs> It's the great equalizer. Do you guys like Bruce Springsteen at 70 years old? I'm a working man despite living in a mansion. Fuck you, Bruce Springsteen. Sorry. Um, quarter uh, three, Chris. Poor Bruce. Poor Bruce. In, his, in his mansions. <laughs> working man, my ass. Uh, Atlanta gets the ball at a halftime because they kicked off uh, to begin the game. And New England's D, that, that coach must have meant something because they sent him three and out. And they look really good. They, they stopped really Freeman. Good. And like I said, Atlanta's defense has to go back on the field. And their offense had not been on the field in over an hour. Yeah. So uh, New England gets the ball back. And they start moving the uh, moving it. Edelman has a great punt return for 34 yards. But a huge chunk is removed, not by a penalty, but because he stepped out of bounds. And Dan Quinn made a really good challenge by uh, – pointing that out, and New England could have easily gotten points on this drive had they not thrown the challenge flag. Oh, yeah. Um, goes incomplete uh, deep to uh, uh, Hogan for a drop, and then um, uh, sets up a third and 12 at 12.57 to go, and Edelman is wide open. He beats, I think, Alford on this play on, like, basically a slant or a cross, and had he caught the ball, he probably would have gained 25, 30 yards, but he just flat out drops. I was going to say, because he's a step ahead of this guy. He's yeah. wide open and the ball's just at midfield. And like, it just goes through his hands. It, it's one of those where it, it's, it could change the game. You know? it, it did. And it saved Atlanta's ass because on this following drive, you're thinking if there was any play that could have changed what might happen, Atlanta gets the ball and just, again, knife through butter as far as they get the well, ball you, in their you own thi- 15. You think. Because of the way the Patriots had came out in the second half, you think they're going to at least make it harder. And it, like you said, they just march down the field. See, it's, this is the point in the game where I'm thinking, they're dead. They're finally dead. Dom had to go back to the bathroom. We I like, had to go back Jesus. to the bathroom at this point. I'm thinking, my tummy's filled. I'm fat, my Dom. I'm drunk as shit. Just shared a yoint. I'm having the best time of my life. And Atlanta starts at their own 15. First play, Ryan finds Gabriel for 17 yards. No, Again, Julio Jones, man, in this era of his this span of his career was just a beast. Well, man. if you didn't have two or three on him, they were going to get it to him. And then when you, when you overload his side, everybody else gets <laughs> yeah. a one-on-one. So you're just like, well, Gabriel's going to be open. It, it's, it's a great offense what i'm surprised though uh coleman gets five on the next play on the ground their center alex mack not of nickelodeon fame who was made the pro bowl is playing with a broken fibula and they're still dominating and new england is a good run defense 
a great reference. That's a great ref. Secret World of Alex Mack. Snick it up, everybody. <laughs> Uh, Gabriel makes an awesome play down to New England, I believe 28, because Malcolm Butler falls down. Ryan gets enough time in the pocket, and he's just sitting there like, how can you cover all of these guys? Yep. Um, it's for 35 yards. Um, Sanu gets him down to the 15 and a first down. Um, Freeman gets him down to the 7 on a run, but then loses 3 yards. But there's a pass interference on third down um, against New England on Gabriel, which gives him a fresh set of downs, first and goal. It's first and goal. And then what does Matt Ryan decide to do? Just a nice little six-yard nice. pass in the flat to Tevin Coleman to put him up 28-3 to with 831 left in the third quarter. And uh, this is the thing that during this drive, uh, I think it was Joe Bucky, <laughs> was up in the – up in the booth and he said he just said Atlanta has too many weapons and I remember that was such a great comment on this because it, they just had too many options going into this it's 28-3 Atlanta literally kills the clock running it for the rest of the game they win the big game and that's it just kidding what, what made no sense to me is post this drive you, you either abandon the run game or the play calling from Shanahan or Ryan audibling. I don't know what the story is, but it was just confusing as shit related to the amount of time on the clock, how gassed your defense is becoming, and how many points you need to win. 28 should have been enough as long as you extended a drive or two. I was going to say, because we'll talk about this when New England turns it on right now. Is They're turning it on and turning me off. <laughs> <laughs> the Atlanta is gassed because, like you said, they've been on the their defense has been on the field, even though it's 28 to 3, a majority of the time. That's yeah. what's so crazy is the – the play calling and like you said, it might have been Ryan audibling on the on the. You, you don't know what it like, is. Like I don't know what it is. It's just bizarre, and like any other teams in those particular situations would have it would have gone much differently for them. Yeah, just due to logic, I don't know. But anyway, New England starts uh, on their own twenty-five. Um, there's a good catch and run again by White for 12. He, he should have been the MVP of this game, in my opinion. You keep calling him White, but his name's Edelman. Just <laughs> Well, they got three of them. Well, they got, I, I think Amendola's a paisan, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got three well, of them at receiver. I thought about that because I literally was thinking there could have been multiple MVPs. I understand yeah. where it went. Mm. To the, oof. Oof. But... Like, if Atlanta won, I would be like, man, Julio should have had. Like, there yeah, were so it many. should have been Julio. And, and then White literally had some of these huge catches like this one. And, and yeah. Um, it's third and three, um, uh, close to midfield. They New England, for whatever reason, calls this weird backwards lateral oh, yeah. for Edelman to for throw because he was to... a college quarterback. Um, so it sets up fourth and three at their own 46 with 6.04 to go. And you're thinking, if New England doesn't convert this, yes. to me, this is the biggest play of the entire game. I know it doesn't seem like that in retrospect and what we'll talk about later, but to me, this is it because New England has no points here at midfield. You're down 25. You're not going to get the ball unless Atlanta does what they later do, but you it's over. It's well, I feel like it's the biggest play up to this point. Yeah. And this is the thing that it should have, it like could have been. How about that? Yeah. Uh, so Amendola makes a big catch and run down to the Atlanta 37. Uh, then they have a third and eight. And they let Tom Brady scramble for 15 yards. The man is turning 40, and you let him just, oh, God. I'll tell you, I'll tell you how confident the Falcons are at this point. I watched this thing where they have players mic'd up, and there's two guys sitting on the bench, and they watch Brady run. And one looks at him, the other one, uh, it was Julio and another receiver, I forget which one. But he just goes, you know when we're watching film and we slow the tape down a little? That's what that looked like. <laughs> oh, that's literally what he said. You on, don't anger the man! That's how confident they were, I'm just saying. And literally because they cut back to uh, another couple of people, be another couple of uh, guys on the side, Falcons, and he goes, we got this. We're going to take this. And the oh. other guy just goes, but it's Tom Brady. <laughs> it's the great Satan himself. So, like, some people are over there being like, yeah. And other ones are like, hold on, guys. We need to, we need to finish. It's the great it's Satan. It's like that moment. He made the deal. 
It's like that moment in Dumb and Dumber where he finds out the toilet's broken and it won't flush, and it's like, do 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 do. And then you see Tom Brady with a chipped tooth just laughing on that hog driving through just Aspen. On that hog. <laughs> Oh, oh man, so that is a good description of what Atlanta does here. So. They keep moving it. Flush, you bastard. Um, Blunt has a couple of big runs down to the five-yard line. One of them for 10, which is a real tough runner along the sidelines. I wanted to point that out because it was he was a tough SOB. Yeah. Um, uh, White has a touchdown catch, actually. Nice little catch and run um, to make it 28-9 to with 2.06 left in the third quarter. And one thing I didn't agree with, though, while watching the game was – Aikman and Buck were like kind of shitting on New England for taking their time on this drive. And I'm thinking, okay, you are down 25. That's four scores. But are you, is it that bad? You still got, you know, when you take over the ball, you need a touchdown. That's what I mean. You need a touchdown, but you're not in that bad a spot. You don't need to start hurrying up until we're like a quarter ahead of this. And then they end up uh, missing. He ends up missing. Kowski misses the extra point to make it 19. Yep. Which to make it nine. A 19 point deficit. Oh yes. Nice. Yes. yes, yes, My bad. Yeah. Yeah, I should have said deficit, but Um, yeah. Two Oh six left in the third quarter. Um, Atlanta at this point though, just a couple of long drives. That's all you need. They don't even need to end in points. Just, just time. Yeah. Just time. So Atlanta gets the ball after an onside kick. A New England try goes for an onside kick, which was just totally botched. It was Benny Hill theme where Guskowski hits the ball. I was going to say, what did you think of the play call? Because I kind of liked it to catch him off guard because you, you don't want to just, like, do it in their face. Yeah, no, I, I would have, if had that been me, I would have agreed with an onside kick. But like you're right where onside, yeah. the kicker misses the field goal. <laughs> Is the extra point, yeah. And then really kicks it and then runs right into the ball. And what's ridiculous, because of the penalty, Atlanta has the ball on New England's 40. You get one first down. Because Matt Bryant, who was the kicker in that wonderful Giants 49ers game, is in this one. Dwight Freeney was also in that Steelers-Colts game. But uh, he's got still a huge leg at age 41. One first down, you're in field goal range. If you're up 22 points in the fourth quarter and they get execute zero onside kicks, you will win that game. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. But what ends up happening... And this is where the play calling really becomes... Like, in retrospect, it's really bad. But, like, really... It's bizarre. Because they keep doing drop back pass plays. So on the first play, they get nine yards to Hooper from the New England 41. On second down, they run the ball with Coleman, which makes sense, but there's a holding penalty on Jake Matthews. Oh, yeah, the holding. I felt like Mr. Feeney would have just scolded him by saying, Mr. Matthews, you're fucking it up for your team, Mr. Matthews. (laughs) Oh, God bless Knight Rider. So second and 11, (laughs) instead of running it again... They go for a pass play on second and 11, and you're thinking, okay, well, you're back. You know, you're 39. Two running plays should get you into a makeable field goal for Bryant, right? You would think. Um, Ryan kind of has the, to rush the throw, and it's incomplete to Hooper. And with the killing of the clock. This is the thing that I feel like wasn't taken into consideration is – you're right there, and your defense is now going to have to come right back on. If I'm throwing the ball in that situation, I'm throwing flat routes, I'm throwing screens, I'm dumping the ball off on safe plays where the guy's either going to be tackled inbounds or he's going to have a decent-sized gain to keep the sticks I was going to say, a little uh, catch and run, a little – and they weren't. So on th- <laughs> they were not doing that. Third and 11, they're at the 42. Literally, you don't even need a first down. Just get five or six yards on something simple. They send Ryan back there again, and he's sacked by Kyle Van Noy, and they're out of field goal range. They're out of field goal range. 38 seconds so, left in the third quarter. So now they have to punt. After a delay a game, which ends the quarter, mercifully, for Atlanta. But you're up 19 in the fourth goddamn quarter. Yeah. You're up 19 points. Going into the fourth. What were you thinking at this point, Chris? I, I'll tell you what I was sh- thinking. Go ahead. No. I've seen this too many times. I turned to my friend and I said, I don't know how, but Atlanta is going to fuck this up royally. 
<laughs> and what happens will be almost as bad as what Sherman did to that city in the 1860s. So th this is exactly what the feeling was, and that's why it, the pats in that time frame were so crazy was nine, you just make that state. You're like, 19 points is a lot. For normal teams. But it's Tom Brady. And the defense, the New England defense, is like they're they're – Kind of like they're, showing that they're they could stop Atlanta at this well, they're point. They're getting their shit together, but yeah. they have to be thinking like Patricia and the rest of the defensive coaches have to be thinking, what are they doing? Like people shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. So Bosher has a great punt um, down new sets New England um, down to their own thirteen, and then Brady just starts to go to work, and the carving begins. Uh, Mitchell has a fifteen yard catch, then another seven. White has a great run for six on first down. Um, Mitchell gets him another big uh, first down with uh, to the Atlanta 41 on third down, the following third down. And then Bennett has a 25-yarder down to the Atlanta 7. They've literally put the fear of God into that defense. And this is why I can't necessarily blame Atlanta's defense for what ends up happening because you can't sustain that type of time of possession and – not give up points. And you could just see this drive especially. They're just gassed, and he is just picking out who's, you know, yeah, essentially open. So, and that's what – I feel like kind of that's what Tom was waiting for, if I'm honest, is he's just like, no, nah, no, nah, you're tired. I'm going to absolutely pick you I'm going you apart. to crush your soul, Yep, make you cry. But this is kind of the Atlanta's D's last gasp, this drive, because on first down from the seven, Grady Jarrett sacks him uh, back to the 13. On second down, White has a catch for a couple. And then on third and goal, Jarrett, again, he had three total sacks in this game. Sacks Brady back at their own 15. So they have to send Guskowski out. Guskowski out for another field goal, which is extra point range. So I'm remembering going, oh, God, just let him miss it for oh, the yeah. love of God. But he dunks it. He dunks it 28-12 uh, to 12 with 9.44 to go. You're thinking, Atlanta, come on. Just get your shit together. Just get your shit together. Just get your shit one drive at the, literally one solid drive. Yeah. So they've only run to this point in the game. Buck had brought this up. Atlanta's offense, 33 plays. I mean, when you're talking about plays to points ratio, that's pretty damn impressive. Very. There's the fallout of it. And they also managed to mention, because announcing teams like to do this, Atlanta has not given up a turnover in the postseason on offense. Oh, I love it. The announcer's curse. Yep. And then we see probably the biggest play. I know Belichick said it was uh, yeah. post-game. I mean, so they start at their own 27. Uh, Coleman gets him eight on first down. Yeah. Um, they run a toss to him, which was smart, thinking, okay, we'll just get the first down, but he's stuffed for no gain. And on that play, on third and two, Coleman's injured and has to go to the sidelines. Coleman is more of their pass-catching, pass-protection back as opposed to Freeman. So Freeman has to go into the game on this third and two, which I guess is fine. Why wouldn't you just run the ball again? Uh, this was another one. This one, to me reeks of I don't even know what the word is idiocy so they send Ryan back Freeman's his sidecar to his right in the backfield who's responsible for the outside rusher who is Dante Hightower you know Hightower is going to come after Ryan if they throw but why why wouldn't you run the damn ball I'm sorry <laughs> why you I thought damn... I thought this play was interesting Hightower comments on it he said they ran the play once before and they picked me up because he, they were blitzing, essentially. When yeah. they, um, Hightower comes to the side, and he just goes, I literally saw Freeman not even look in my direction. Freeman and if you, sees him too late, and yes. he whiffs. And, but it doesn't look like he gives any effort at all. No, but I, I literally think he wasn't – he was he was thinking he wasn't there, which is a – it was bad. He does that. That's his main job exactly. on third down and in sub packages. Dante Hightower, say. if you watch any fucking film, Freeman – Starts flipping the table. Are but you that, kidding me? No. But that's what I mean. Where it was very much like it was 
a great play by Hightower. Yeah, obviously. But really a mess, a missed play by Freeman more than anything. Well, and if you look down the field who Ryan was looking at, because he had, I don't think he had any idea Hightower. I thought no, he, he just didn't. figured he had been picked up. Yep. Receivers were open down the field. If yes. he completes that pass. He's cocking this. Sh- he, that's why he literally has the ball up ready to go. Hightower comes in, knocks the ball loose. New England gets it. This is this is probably why it's the biggest play of this entire you game. Just hear Simon and Garfunkel in the background. Do 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 do. So it's eight twenty four. They have the ball at the Atlanta twenty five, and they're down two touchdowns and two two point conversions. Which eight twenty four is an eternity, and you have the ball for Timmy? just outside the red zone. Yeah, for Timmy, two seconds is an eternity. He got the he messaged the sideline. He said, "Hey, deflate a couple of those balls. I need them." <laughs> God. So on this drive, to begin it, Atlanta, their defense fought so hard. Freeney gets a sack on Brady, which is probably like his one billionth sack ever. Um, White uh, has a catch for around four to set up a third and 11. But this is when the defense is just done. Done, yeah. I mean, it's over. They have to be going to the sidelines just going to the offense. Can you, like, get first downs? Mm -hmm. You don't even need to score. Just first downs. Um, Mitchell has a 22-yard catch. Uh, I'm sorry, a 12-yard catch to make a first down, and then uh, Amendola has a catch for seven and ends up scoring another touchdown for New England to make it 28-18. And now they got to go for two. They got to go for two after the six-yard touchdown catch um, by Amendola. And who do they go to on this interesting two-pointer? Uh, is this the one where they go to White? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They. Uh, hit Direct snap it to White out of the backfield, yep. and he ends up making it Which, 28 to 20. And I was going to say, it's a great play call um, with just the miss, you know, the direct snap into White and then take it for two. And then you – There's just under six minutes left now. And the, and the announcers at fucking old Joe Bucky makes a comment where he's just like, oh, we have a game. And you're just like, yeah, dickhead. Have you been watching the last 20 minutes? Like, it's almost like they came into it. They were just like, oh, Tom could do this. There Atlanta was can't do anything on offense. Good stretch, though, I'd say, in that sec- beginning of that second half where they were all but, like, verbally filleting Matt Ryan. Like, oh, this was 100%. a coronation that, like, Matt Ryan joins the big boys of the NFL and as far as quarterbacks go. And we still got a game that to torch. And yeah, 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 it was very much like that, in which – I do kind of agree because he was, you know, marching down the field with this team, but it was too early to start saying that shit. So uh, Atlanta gets the ball back at their own 10. A good kickoff by Guskowski uh, ends up sending Hardy to, uh, James Hardy to the sideline. So they have to start at their own 10 with just under six minutes to go. But they start – Freeman makes up for his mistake because he gets a huge 39-yard catch and run to almost mm-hmm. midfield. And at that point, you're thinking, look, time has run out enough. If they kick a field goal, unless some, like, utterly wacky, not based in reality shit happens, they'll win the game. There's just not enough time if and they this, kick a field goal. And this is the thing that I feel like they, if you're an Atlanta, hand, Atlanta fan, you keep harping on is – we just needed three points yeah. just to put it that much out of reach. And so, oh, God. Uh, Freeman goes for one um, on uh, second down or on first down. And on that play, right tackle, Kyle Schrader is hurt. So their line is already kind of starting to fall apart. Like, if they're going to win this game, they need to win it right goddamn now. Yep. Um, so on second and nine, Ryan – gets pressured and escapes the pocket and goes to the sidelines to Julio. And what should have been the greatest catch and throw for a non-touchdown in Super I mean, describe this play, Chris. It's that awesome. It is such a if – you, if you go back and watch it, because it's amazing catch. The throw to uh, on top of it is – it's in this smallest window that you could possibly have two guys on him like he likes it. <laughs> Julio catches the ball one foot in and then somehow slams the other one down. Slams the other one down. And I remember seeing it and thinking it was incomplete. Oh, do you know really? do you know what I mean? Where you see it really fast and you're just like, no way, that was it yeah. was more like that, not like that. And then they showed a replay and you're just like Oh, that was the greatest catch. Right. Because it is literally a window like this, catches it, and 
the way he slams his second foot down, that was the thing I was just like, no, no. He's a freak of nature. Yeah. Like, and it's a 27-yard play down to the New England 22. This is a chip shot for Matt Bryant. And what I will never understand is you could literally kneel three times with Matt Ryan. New England axes all of their timeouts. You set yourself up with a 42, 43-yard field goal. You make that – it's over. It's, it, the whole thing is over. I, but they elect to keep running plays, and they call all of the wrong ones. Yes. So they're not even, like, playing it safe, I feel like, in this moment where they're, like, just run it up the middle. Whatever, you, whatever their safe play is, it, it's more like – To me, I'm not even saying that's playing to lose. To me – you need points to win. You win with a field goal. If you kneel and don't fuck anything up and put yourself at risk for penalties or a turnover, yep. you've essentially won the game. Like, even as gassed as your defense is, they got to drive the length of the field, get a two point conversion, convert an onside kick, and then get into field goal range. It's nearly impossible. And the killing of the clock with just kneeling it. it it's, That's what I mean. It, and it, you're taking away the Patriots' timeouts. Yep. So. Uh, first down, they pitch it to Freeman, and he loses a yard. Then they decide to pass. I was going to say, oh god, even pitching it to Freeman and losing a yard—that's not isn't, bad. No, that's fine. But Matt Ryan, I feel like, and I would love to know because I've seen the the I've seen Dan Quinn actually take credit for the play calling at the end of the game, which I wonder if it's him just being the head coach or just like everything falls on me. Yes. Yeah. Or if he was audibling on the, on the, cause it, it should have been a, a run. It's not. And Ryan gets sacked and he gets sacked for like, what, like eight, almost out of field goal range at this point. Yeah. And then, and then they another have a penalty happens. I was going to say, and then they have play. a great fucking catch and a holding penalty. Mr. Matthews. <laughs> Mr. Matthews. And then on fourth down, they're out of field goal range. They're out of field goal range. It's harsh. Um, and it, they have to punt. And this is what I mean with New England possibly being the luckiest yeah. team because just this sequence of plays is so unlucky and bad calling. And it, it's just so much bullshit to go into this. I mean, if like – I was a co- say Dan Quinn kneels it three times and they win that game by kicking a field goal and somebody criticizes him and I'd just be like bitch, I won, won the game. Yeah, I won I the game. I played to win. Yeah, <laughs> like so three thirty eight to go. New England takes over um, at their own, I believe, eight yard line because Bosher has another great punt mm-hmm. for Atlanta. They're playing the field position game and near the shadow of their own goal line. I thought Atlanta's D. Almost made that one last stand. They it, almost had it in him, dude. They almost sacked Brady, and he almost threw an interception. Mm-hmm. So, like, they almost sacked him. Uh, I don't. It was like near the goal line. I don't know what it would have been if it. But he literally was lucky to throw it in like just empty space. It because just he a just, duck. It was if that had been in the middle of the field, the guy would have taken it back. It would have. It, yes. It was. A, it was a fucking. And at duck. that point, I'm just like. Uh. Yep. <laughs> I, you have no idea how hard I rooted for Atlanta in this game after the previous game. Like, oh, God. I, I think I wore black and red that night. That's awesome. To be honest. So I'm a salty bastard, Chris. I'm sorry. So on second down, he goes deep to Hogan incomplete, which sets up third and 10. And Hogan ends up with a 16-yard catch to move the sticks for him. Um, uh, tipped pass by Alfred uh, creates a second and 10, but... Mitchell gets him 11 to keep moving the sticks also, which is like, come on, man. You're killing me. Uh, and then we get to the catch of the game, I That's feel like. This, the, is what, this is what stole the soul of Atlanta. I'll, I'll say this to where this is an amazing catch. It's not amazing like Julio Jones's catch is amazing. No. This catch is amazing because of the time, the – the fact that he actually Edelman actually gets it, the placement of the defenders, all yeah. of it, yeah, all of it, all of that. Which I love the fact that you get these two unbelievably great catches, and they are t- completely different. Yeah. So Brady throws one kind of in the middle of the field, and Alford tips it. He should have rightfully intercepted this it was, pass. Yes. 
Um, Ricardo Allen is on Edelman, and as the ball is just sitting there in the air and it falls down, Edelman ha- somehow is able to scoop it up off of, I believe, uh, Allen's arm. Allen's arm, yep. And when you see it in real time, like you said with the Julio one, you're like, there's no the way he caught that ball. I'll tell you what. I watched the mic'd up thing, and one of my favorite things from this whole game was – as he's catching it, because Edelman was one of the guys that was mic'd up, he literally is saying, I caught it. I caught it. <laughs> I caught it. And then he's talking with the – I think he was talking I, I, with one of the cornerbacks because they keep pointing at the the Jumbotron. They're like, no, you didn't. It fell right there. He, kept, he keeps going. I caught it. Not look right there. I caught it. And he was right. He – to his credit, it was one of the best catches because of his reaction. He lets it go for a second and catches it. Yeah. It, it's so, it, yeah. That, that's when it, That's when you knew. That's when I you mean, knew. That's when you just knew, like, there's oh, no coming back from this. There's no coming back. Oh, man. Somebody take the Falcon outside and shoot him. Oh, God. The Falconer. Uh, so, Amendola has a huge catch and run to get down to the Atlanta uh, 21 yard line, and we get to the two minute warning. Um, Brady throws to White, gets him eight yards. Um, uh, White gets to end up down to the one on a great catch. Um, and then uh, another James White touchdown run. 28 to 26 with 57. Atlanta, you're still in it. If you stop them here, you can win the game. That's very true. Because they need the two pointer. They have to run a play. Yep. And then it it doesn't even matter that Dwight Freeney's offsides. Uh, Amendola makes a catch and runs in. Yep. Just a nice little ding and and dunker like they always do. I was going to say, they have that play. They have those plays just kind of ready. Amendola gets it 28 28. Atlanta can do nothing on the ensuing drive. No. You you just you know what's coming. You know? Well, you you could tell the momentum has shifted so much that I, I can't imagine what the cuz you don't see a lot of the talk at that point on the Atlanta sideline. I was I, talking to my buddy after when it went to overtime. I said, if New England wins the toss, I, they're going to go right down the field and score. It's I not, said the same Atlanta's thing. Atlanta's not going to see the ball unless they win the coin toss. And then what happens? They march right down the goddamn field. New England wins the coin toss. They start march. their own 25 with the touchback. They only have one play, negative play, a yep. loss of three yards where Jones stops White on a screen. Otherwise, it's just carving with Amendola, Hogan, Edelman, and White. And a huge pass interference by Devondre Campbell puts New England the ball at, at the, the one. Atlanta. Yeah, the one and a half, two yard line. Yeah. And then on second and goal, White takes the pitch, cuts it back, and scores a touchdown. And it's the first Super Bowl overtime game. Yeah, first to Super- end like that. Oh my god. I can't imagine what it felt like because I mean, they were printing the Atlanta Falcons 51. And now they're headed to South America for some lucky kids in their Buffalo Bills attire. Did you ever think about that? Some kid in Ecuador is just like, no, 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 the Falcons won the big, the, 50, the 51st big game? No, 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 they won. And you're just like, no, they didn't. You're just like, yeah, I had that shirt. These Buffalo I grew Bills up are with a dynasty. <laughs> the Bills are a dynasty, aren't they? We're talking minimum. They're AP. like... <laughs> minimum minimum it's crazy but no i mean i would actually love to get my hands on some of those falcons ones and then just go to atlanta and see if anyone oh, notices gosh. and then be beaten mercilessly you guys remember when you had it you had it you had it you had it all you had to do was and you said this they just needed to put together one drive it didn't need to end in points just be, for time, maybe it would have saved it. your defense. There's so many times that they could have just won the game. To me, that drive post onside kick was as bad as that was the worst one. Yeah. You're second and one at the 32. You don't even need, you just need that one first down and a little extra, and you've won the game. And oh my God, I. And it's heartbreaking. S- since then, it hasn't been the same for Atlanta. I mean, they made the playoffs the following years, but the year, but lost to Philadelphia, and they have not been back since. 
like they completely cratered after but, this. Like you said too, they had a great coaching staff where almost all of them have gone on to become head coaches and just not with the Falcons. Just not with the Falcons. So I feel like and this is the kind of thing that really is is like I said is heartbreaking is going into this game, I think Joe Buck said this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of these guys and I feel like it was for a lot of those Falcons and a lot of the Falcons fans cuz like yeah. it's not like you're facing 14 and 2 Denver like where you know you're going to get the beat breaks beat off you. Yeah. Just related talent. They were a better team than New England. I mean, they proved it throughout this game. They just cocked it up yeah. just horribly. But it made for an exciting time yeah, for it, not Falcons fans. And people who didn't just hate Tom Brady's Well, guts. I mean, but I, that, yeah. it, you're, it was probably one of the most entertaining, definitely the most entertaining comeback because it's hard to say – what is a great super? Excuse me. If there's anybody that can lead a meltdown, it's Matt Ryan. There you I go. I mean, that is the Chernobyl as we've seen this last season of quarterbacks when it matters. <laughs> biggest regular season, biggest Super Bowl. Good job, Matty Ice. There you go. Thank you all very much.